Yes, ma'am. I'm just pulling up my agenda again remotely. Just one moment. Okay. All right, do we have someone that will be able to gavel the meeting on my behalf from the boardroom? Mr. Wilson did. Okay, perfect. He's already done, so I didn't hear it. The meeting will now come to order. This meeting is being held in pursuant to executive order N 2920 issued by the California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 12, 2020. Any and all board members may attend the meeting by phone. Members of the public may attend at the Fairfield Sassoon Central Office to observe and comment during this meeting. May I have a roll call? Ms. Martino? Here. Mrs. Honeychurch? Here. Mr. Isom? Here. Ms. Patero? Mr. Richardson? Here. Ms. Smith? Here. Ms. Tilly? Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. And the governing board's attorney from DWK, William Tunick, is also present. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. May I have approval of the agenda? Move approval. Second, that's me. We have that from board member Isom and board member Smith. Roll call vote. Ms. Martino? Aye. Mrs. Honeychurch? Aye. Mr. Isom? Aye. Ms. Patero? Nay, and I object to this entire meeting, and I'm going to leave this meeting because I am not going to dignify this meeting with my presence. Goodbye. Mr. Richardson? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Tilly? Aye. Mr. Wilson? I to the agenda. That item passes. <clears throat> Going to forego the opening opening statement. Um, I do want to at least just preface uh, in accordance to our Brown Act um, requirements of meetings. Um, board member uh, Vice President Bethany Smith and I um, are are learning of this information. Uh, just as the public is, uh, just so that we did not create any Brown Act violations. Um, and we're going to defer this um, to um, the team of board members who are bringing this resolution forward so that we can all um, be aware of any additional details as well as any discussion. Um, so we do move to item E. Uh, item E, do we have any public comments on this item? Uh, clarify, which item are we moving to next? Um, we're going to be moving uh, one e. to 1E, public, e, public comment. 
on the approved agenda. Yes, the first two speakers are Jack Flynn, then Jacob Francisco. The public is reminded that masks must be worn at all times, even when speaking during public comment. The 30 minute time limit for public comment applies to speaker time, not time in between to clean the screens or transition the speakers. In ordinary board meetings, public comment is limited only to uh, any item relating to school district business. In this meeting, this is a special meeting, public comment is limited to the uh, one agenda item that we are considering. If, uh, if you stray from that, then I may correct you. So be aware that public comments are limited to the agenda item, review and potential approval of the resolution formal public censure of trustee Anna Patero. Uh, the first two speakers are Jack Flynn, then Jacob Francisco. Good afternoon, Superintendent Corey, Board President Richardson, members of the Governing Board, and members of the community. My name is Jack Flynn. I am a junior at Early College High School and a student ambassador of Generation at Fairfield Sassoon. I'm here tonight to express my opposition to Resolution 552021, the formal public censure of Trustee Ana Patero. As a student in the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District, I feel that this resolution is a spiteful attempt to silence the voice of an elected school board trustee without any concern for the unhealthy and unproductive implications that this resolution has. This resolution is based on false and unfounded allegations against Trustee Patero. It's instead clearly motivated by partisan politics instead of a desire to bring people together. I have been a student in the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District for all of my academic career, since my first day of kindergarten in August 2009. Since then, I have observed in classes the meaningful difference between respectful discussions that focus on collaboration and bringing people together and hateful and bitter debate in which people's feelings are hurt. And This resolution is clearly a product of an unhealthy and alienating bias towards board member Patero. Let me ask board members this question. What example is this resolution for for learning how to act in an ever-changing world. The goal of this district should be to focus on educating our students in order for them to engage in respectful discussion and conversation so that they will not isolate and harass others and pursue their own beliefs and opinions. Is in, this, in this spirit and goodwill and being respectful to you, to one another, I want to reflect on what board member David Isom discussed at the previous meeting. Board member Isom, you expertly and flawlessly quoted William Shakespeare, and you gave an inspirational statement on what Shakespeare's words meant to you. However, board member Isom, let me remind you of another quote from William Shakespeare. Quote, the speaker well, is reminded to limit comments to the resolution on the agenda. Which uh, I am. I'm, uh, if you can me get to the quote, it is related to this. Please limit your comments to the item on the agenda. Proceed. Quote, Love all, trust a few, and do wrong to none, end quote. This resolution is not focused on loving all and is instead focused on doing wrong. It is in those brilliant words of William Shakespeare that I ask, what example are we setting? This governing board is viewed by so many people as a source for guidance, as is the board who makes decisions on the education of the leaders of tomorrow. Let us raise those leaders of tomorrow to be kind and respectful, not divisive and hostile. I urge this governing board to vote no on this resolution. Thank you for your time and consideration. The next two speakers are Jacob Francisco, then Kelly Ryan.
Good afternoon, Superintendent Corey, Board President Richardson, members of the governing board and members of the community. My name is, as you already know, Jacob Francisco, and I am the alternate student board member. I'm here today to speak in opposition of resolution number 55-2021, formal public uh, censure of Trustee Ana Patero. This district is a student-centered district where children come first and remain the underlying reason for its push for continued excellence. What was seen at the May 13th governing board meeting was all but a push for the students of this district. As I work tirelessly to represent my constituents, it pains me to see the governing board stoop down to a level of chaos where unrecognized board members speak out of turn while board members who are recognized are speaking. It is without a doubt that the May 13th governing board meeting will be appalling to Ms. Deb Dudley to see happen, especially after our self-evaluation meeting. From that self-evaluation meeting, Ms. Dudley gave us an example of a district censuring a board member for doing, among other things, throwing his car keys at a principal and telling him to park his car just because he was a board member. In that case, censuring makes sense. What I can clearly see is that within this district, there doesn't seem to be a care for the students with the motion passing with a majority of the board supported on May 13th. Now going into my position, I looked up to all of you board members because I thought that each and every one of you were dignified individuals who did not let personal feelings interfere with proper school governance. This display of childishness that I saw has let me down. These board members who I once looked up to cannot be admired in the same way. The speaker is reminded to limit his comments to the resolution on the agenda. Please. I'm getting there, Ms. Mr. Wilson. I would think that all of you would hold yourselves to a higher standard, but from this resolution, it seems that the vote will truly expose the true nature of this board. The whole situation is perplexing me. I figured that after the first self-evaluation uh, meeting, the board would take into consider consideration any action before proceeding and do so after the second meeting with Ms. Deb Dudley. It's clear that this board would go forward and could not wait, but this action is definitely not beneficial for all the board. We've seen inefficiencies in this board and the passage of this resolution would only make the board more ineffective. With that being said, I urge all of you board members to vote no on the passage of this resolution because without an effective governing board, the students of our district will suffer. Please reflect on that when voting. Thank you. The next two speakers are Kelly Ryan, then Angelo Velasco. I don't remember what you told me about where I start. Where do I, when do I start now? Yeah. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Superintendent Corey. Board President Richardson, members of the governing board and members of the community. My name is Kelly Ryan and I am a parent of, the, of a student in the district. I am here to speak against the resolution to censor board member Ana Patero. In, a, in addition to her work on the governing board, she is so dedicated to students, to teachers and to uh, parents and the public. I have experienced many of this firsthand with her. I have, I am a colleague of Ana Patero's and I have seen her dedication to students. I have witnessed her spending time after class helping students to make sure they understand the concepts to help them do well in their studies. And again, this is a reason that she should not be censored. Second, Professor, Professor Patero is dedicated to teachers. She is willing to help at any time, well beyond her normal duties. I've been a beneficiary of that help as she really took time on a Saturday to explain the online grading system to me well before COVID. So I was able to get that, that skill. And again, this shows her dedication and why she should not be censored. Finally, Ana Patero is very dedicated to parents and to the community. I have volunteered with Ana Patero in several different events over the years and seeing her dedication, which she does with such good cheer. And again, this is a reason that Ana Patero should not be censored. She's, Ana Patero is a true gift to the Fairfield Sassoon School Board, and she's a fresh voice that we very much need. I urge members to vote no on this resolution to censor Ana Patero. 
she, we need to demonstrate a measure of goodwill toward one another. And board members should be role models for this goodwill of that which we expect students, parents, teachers, all to adhere to, to have a goodwill toward others, even when we disagree with them. Please demonstrate this goodwill today by voting no on this on this resolution to censor board member Anna Patero. Thank you. The next two speakers are Angelo Velasco, then Nancy Dunn. Good afternoon, distinguished members of the board and Craig Wilson. I was taken aback seeing the agenda for this special meeting for the first time around 12 hours ago. What business could possibly be so urgent as to call a meeting on a Wednesday, on an off week, at 12 in the afternoon? The censure, the censorship of a board member trustee who by all accounts is only trying to fulfill her duties to the district and to the public that she serves. At the regular meeting on 21 April 2021, a meeting at which I was in attendance, Trustee Patera was speaking on her valid concerns with an item on the agenda when she was interrupted by another trustee who questioned the relevance of her comments before she was even finished speaking and moved to end discussion on the item. It is against Robert's rules of order to interrupt the speaker unless there is a point of order. The speaker is reminded to limit comments to the agenda item we are considering today. Proceed. Before that, another member repeatedly spoke out of order to criticize Patero's choice of language. What I saw on that day at best was a group of tired trustees who instead of serving the public- The speaker really is straying from the agenda item. Is the speaker willing to limit his comments to the agenda item, yes or no? Yes. Proceed. Whichever the way the board votes today, Ana Patera will continue to serve her constituents, myself included, and execute her duties to the district, parents, and students faithfully and tirelessly as she has been for the whole of her term to date. And I pray that the board learn from this experience and you know, create a better environment for students and the public. Thank you. The next two speakers are Nancy Dunn, then Stephanie Cobb. Good afternoon, Governing Board members. I'm Nancy Dunn, President of Fairfield Sassoon Unified Teachers Association. I'm speaking to you today in opposition to the censure of Trustee Patero. FSUDA bylaws require me to attend Governing Board meetings. I have attended each board meeting mentioned in this resolution, and it is disturbing that the trustees, that other trustees acted in similar ways to Trustee Patero, yet are not subject of censure. You, with YouTube, it's easy to review the comments, tones, and behaviors of all the board members, bringing into question if an equitable standard is being applied to all trustees. Parts of the resolution are, are uh, inaccurate. For example, one allegation states, the work of teachers was disrupted by an unscheduled visit. As the exclusive representative for teachers, I can attest members were not disrupted from teaching their students because of Trustee Patero's visit. Any disruption came from the fact they were teaching with loud paving noises directly outside their rooms and because they were inhaling noxious fumes. The most important reason FSUDA is speaking in opposition to this resolution is the example it is setting for our students. The relationship demonstrated by all trustees in these last few months have not modeled the behavior we expect of our students. This resolution teaches our students it is okay for a larger established group to push away the newcomer. It is um, teaching our students intolerance for uh, opposing points of view rather than working together to reach consensus. It is teaching them that asking hard questions and persisting in support of their beliefs will lead to attempts to silence them. A school board is composed of elected officials, so it is democracy in action at the most fundamental level. In a democracy, function must always be more important than form. It is the trustee's job to ask tough questions on behalf of their constituents. There have been no concerns raised by those who elected Trustee Patero about her performance. During the facilitated discussion last Thursday, the facilitator talked about eroding trust with the community. 
this, out of this resolution holds a meeting with one day's notice order. and at a time when few could attend is examples of how trust is lost of order. please do not hasten the further erosion of community <laughs> confidence in our governing board by voting in favor Thank of you. this venture thank you for your time the next speaker is stephanie cobb then sandy fan Where's the timer? It's right there on the bottom. It'll pop up when you start. Okay. Hello. My name is Stephanie Cobb, and I am speaking as an individual. So as I opened my email yesterday and found out that a my school board member, because she represents me in my where I live since I live in Fairfield, has been censored. It brought back a negative image of FSUSD. FSUSD has a reputation of being a racist to people of color, whether they are students or staff. I would like to say that it has gotten better, but obviously, as we can see, it is not, has not. I find it ironic that no one on the board is willing to mentor Anna, but sure, there are many votes on this board that's willing to censor her. Censoring never works. Silencing an individual because they don't fit in your clique has never been productive. Your vote for censor is a vote to continue the racist behavior of this district. Thank you. The next two speakers are Sandy Fan, then Bradley Larson. Can I begin? Cool. Hi there. My name is Sandy Fan. Uh, I live in Sassoon City and uh, Bethany Smith's district specifically. And I am here to also um, vo voice my dissent against the policy to censure, the resolution to censure Ana Patero. Purely due for a couple of reasons, Ana Patero, as the governing board has probably realized at this time, is a community member. Not only is she out there every single day working in the community, but working with the community. This alone makes her in touch with all of us. So today I shared this meeting and the reason why it was happening online to Facebook to over 2,000 people. And the number one question is, why is this meeting being held on a Wednesday at noon when the public has zero access on Wednesday at noon? Honestly, I didn't even find about this meeting until I read the morning paper. So we have a lot of questions on how it's being run right now. But the number one thing is the censure of Ana Patero is absolutely ridiculous, purely due to the fact that so far, as one of the constituents of this governing board, all we have seen is Ana Patero doing exactly what the constituents want, want, asking the right questions and doing exactly what she needs to do. And sure, it's making you all uncomfortable. And we understand that. But the question is, is, is it just because she's making you uncomfortable? Because some of the things that are happening right now with this governing board are kind of shady. Is, it, is she making you uncomfortable because she's asking the wrong questions? Or is she making you uncomfortable because she's a black woman? Is that is my question, and that is it. Thank you. With the next, the last two speakers are Bradley Larson, then Ruth Clawson. All right, is it started? Okay. Cool. Uh, my name is Bradley Larson. I am speaking on behalf of myself, student Mono. Community College, who actually had to cancel his own class to be here today due to the timing of the meeting. Uh, I feel that it is a statement in its own that you guys are making this meeting 12 o'clock on a Wednesday because you are trying to make it so people do not voice their comments uh, about what you're doing here, which is obviously wrong. Uh, I do want to extend a thank you to everyone who has come out in support of Ana Patero, uh, despite the fact of being 12 o'clock on a Wednesday to show your support. Thank you all very much. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a prepared statement because, as I stated, uh, I didn't find out until this. It's like I wasn't supposed to be here. Rather, I was supposed to be in class. Um, that should show you how much this uh, this woman means to me. That I'm willing to leave the class to limit comments to the agenda item before. in order to come here. Is how much she means to the community, Mr. Wilson. I'd like to also address that it's kind of messed up that you keep trying to censor people who are trying to voice their support of someone during a meeting in which you're trying to censor someone who is trying to support the community. Limit 
Is the speaker willing to limit his comments to the agenda? I'm speaking about what's on the agenda, sir. I'm speaking about what's on the agenda and what's happening right now during this meeting. Uh, what is the agenda item, sir? The agenda item is the resolution to censure on Aptero in which I am in opposition of. Please speak. Please proceed. Thank you. I, I felt that that was clear. Sorry if it wasn't. Moving on. Like I stated, I think it's pretty ridiculous not only that this meeting is at noon on a Wednesday, but the fact that Greg Wil Craig Wilson has uh, feels that it's necessary to speak over members of the community who are simply trying to voice their opinion. It's happened to me. It's happened to literally every single speaker who's on here trying to support Anna. Is so, like, the community is speaking to you, sir. They're trying to tell you their opinion. To the agenda item. Is the speaker willing to limit comments to the agenda item? I'm speaking on the agenda item, sir. Uh, proceed. Thank you for wasting my time yet again. So <laughs> it's clear that you're just trying to take away from our message, but we're here to support Anna. She's done all that she can to support our community, and we'd like to give back to her, right? So yeah, please, please just let me finish my point. As I was stating, uh, yeah, it's ridiculous that you guys are trying to censure someone who has actually been doing things for the community. If you look to her track record, she has adopted a section of land in Fairfield that she maintains and cleans. Like, do you guys do that? Are you guys trying to reach out and help the community? Are you doing anything that Anna is doing for this community? Comments are limited to the agenda. I don't okay. know. Have a great day, sir. Thank you for wasting my time and everyone else's. Our last speaker is Ruth Clawson. Uh, good afternoon. I'm here to speak on action item number two, the formal public censure of trustee Anna Patero. Um, I'm here because I read the newspaper this morning and I also um, I'm feeling surprised that this has shown up at a, not a regular meeting and that it's held at noon. Luckily, I was able to come over, but I don't think many people that would like to express their concerns about this are available for this meeting. I just wanted to say that I feel like this is a ridiculous situation that I have so many questions about, and unfortunately the format doesn't allow you to answer those for me, but um, I would prefer uh, any trustee to be able to show up at a school at any time to see what's going on ask questions, talk to concerned citizens, go to city council meetings, speak and listen to the community and to want to know about how funds are used and to think about where they are going and to be able to talk about those things with the constituents that they represent. When I think about the word trustee, I'm placing trust in you to handle these kinds of things and to do these kinds of things. And that's what I see Anna doing. Um, I agree with uh, previous comments that some of you have been become uncomfortable because uh, Anna is direct. She gets to the point. She's spirited. She's passionate. She she loves to um, go with gusto and and accomplish things. The and I think you should support her. And that I, I urge you to um, to do away with this uh, public censure of a trustee. I don't even know how we got here. It makes me worried about the violation of laws, the policies, the bylaws, and your adopted governance standards if this is um, where they lead. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, there are no more public speakers on this item. Thank you, Mr. Clark. We move to item two action item, which is the formal public censure of trustee. Um, we move to item 2A, which is the review and potential approval of resolution number 55-2021, formal public censure of trustee Anna Patero. I'm gonna defer this to um, Dr. David Isom um, so that they can provide um, any additional insight um, to the document that's been posted for us all to view. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let me uh, first address a couple of things. First of all, the reason that this meeting was called at the time that it was called and in the urgency that it was called for is based on the need to interfere with the possibility 
of the district being sued for violations. People are saying they can't hear. I will start again because this needs to be heard. Testing, is this better? Testing, one, two, is this better? Is this better without the mask? You have permission. So, um, and, and this is interesting that I'm doing this. The reason that I'm here is not because I want to be here. I'm still concerned personally about COVID, but I did not want this to happen while I was out of town. I'm leaving town tomorrow and I did not want to be remote and also remote from another state during such an important action. The other reason why this meeting is called in the way that it was called is because board member Tilly will be out of town as well. So we wanted to make sure that we were here. Again, I am very uncomfortable, very anxious right now, sitting here, not because of anything except for where we find ourselves as we are still in the midst of a pandemic. Speaking to the resolution 55, 2021, it is very, very, very clear of what the resolution states. The center points out violations of board policies, norms, and governance standards. I heard statements regarding love, but board member Patero stated her hate for a resolution against hate. Let that sink in. I hate this resolution against hate. I heard statements regarding this unhealthy, in quote, I put action. However, I feel that the actions outlined in the resolution are unhealthy. I hope that after reading all of the whereases, someone called me today and said, you've got so many whereases in there. Someone from the California Teachers Association called me and after a conversation, it was clear that something has to be done. Now, there was conversation about mentoring. You can only mentor those who choose to be mentored. You can only have civil conversations offline, not even in a boardroom, with people that choose to talk with you. My community outreach is clear. I don't take pictures every time I go out and clean up a street. I don't, I don't have to. I've been doing this for so long. It's not about taking pictures and being recognized for what I do. It's about doing the work. Last thing I'll say is if you read past all of the whereases, you'll come to a statement that says, be it resolved. And then it says, be it further resolved. And the further resolve is what this is all about. It's about making sure that any board member, any board member who violates the rules, standards, protocols of this board, which are our law, If we violate them, we can cost the district. So what this does for everyone who's concerned about teachers and classrooms, when the district is sued for actions taken by board members, which go against our governance standards, protocols, board policies, that money comes from the general fund. It is not an insurable 
action. And the classroom is what is affected, period. I move approval of resolution number 55-2021, the former public censure of trustee Anna Botero. And I say this, this is not silencing anyone. This is making sure that should things continue to violate our policies, protocols, procedures, and norms, that we are not responsibly held financially, which is the definition of a trustee to make sure of the financial health of a school district. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. I second the motion. We have a motion by Dr. David Isom and a second by board member Craig Wilson. Um, at this time, do we have any board discussion? I'll begin with board member Tilly. Thank you. I'm gonna do this, this is better. Thank you, um, board president Richardson, and thank you to those of you who took time out of your day, took time away from your classes, took time out of your lives to come and, um, and inquire and express your views regarding the proposed action to censure, not censor, censure board member Patera. Why are we here? Following election to public office and before an elected official is authorized to act, each trustee is administered the oath of office where we swear to faithfully discharge the duties of our office consistent with the Constitution of the United States, the state of California, the laws of the state, and the governing documents of our district. And we defend them against all enemies. That's the oath we swear before we come to the dais. That's the oath that um, Board Member Patero swore and has work, been working hard to faithfully execute. Board members commit to principles under our governing documents. Each board member commits to focusing on the needs of all of our students not special interest groups, not bargaining groups, all of our students. Board members are expected to focus on learning and achievement for all of our district students and to avoid behaviors that distract from this overriding concern. That's our job, it's what we're supposed to do, it's our goal. Restrictions such as the Brown Act on the conduct of our members and on our interactions with each other as board members protect our learning community from decisions being made outside of public scrutiny that affect our students without due deliberation and provides the opportunity for all sides to weigh in for or against a proposed action. As board members, we learn to understand that authority rests with the board as a whole and not with individual board members. Does that mean we don't wanna hear from each other? No. Does that mean that we want to chill free speech or expression? No. Does that mean that we want to maintain a under the oath of office that we took upon being granted privilege presenting our learning community. So in order to keep fidelity to those goals, we recognize that decisions are made only at properly noticed and scheduled meetings. We do our homework, we avoid surprises in order to strengthen our deliberative process. If we are engaged in advocacy as an individual outside our role as a board member, which is a great thing to do, I encourage it. 
We have the obligation to make that clear in order to avoid the appearance of speaking for the board. It's just real simple. Hi, many of you did it today. So and so speaking as an individual. Thank you for that. Why do we do that? Because when a board member speaks in public, uh, people often listen. And if the publics are made in conjunction with a different public meeting, they attribute those comments to the entire board, whether or not the other board members subscribe to those comments. That's not fair. It's not right. It needs to be addressed. Deliberation regarding a problem in need of attention by bringing those issues to the board agenda setting meeting is the mechanism that we have to find a way to hear all sides. No one's trying to hide anything here. We don't have transparency issues. We do have trust issues. We have to keep confidential certain things. We serve a judicial and deliberative function. And although the current culture is uh, not so much uh, impressed by privacy, if you are an individual who is under discussion in a privileged uh, environment, you would not appreciate that information getting out in the public before you had an opportunity to even respond. So we need to keep fidelity to that too. When a board raises positions or board member or comments during the meeting on items not before the board and not on the agenda, that board member deprives the other board members and the public of the right to be heard, whether in favor or against the position taken. It chills that. That's why we try to keep fidelity to the item before. If someone hears a statement at a board meeting and the decision's made, and they said that wasn't on the agenda, I wanted to speak to that. They can sue the district, and we are required to pay attorneys to defend the district against that violation. So we're pretty careful because we don't want to take money out of our classrooms, away from our teachers, away from our students. This is why board members are called out of order in meetings. There is no pleasure taken in putting this censure motion forward. I adore board member Patero. I want to work with her. I can't wait to collaborate with her on any position that she invites me to do so. However, in order to avoid liability and legal expense, I request a vote in favor of the censure motion. We move to board member Honeychurch followed by board member Smith. Thank you. This indeed is a very distressing meeting. I do not doubt for one minute Anna's dedication to students, to her community. I do not um, question her, her enthusiasm and wanting to do the right thing. That is not in question at all. I know she comes from wanting to help. She's in education, she's a teacher, so she has that. What the censure is about is bringing her concerns and questions in appropriate way to our meetings so that we can handle them appropriately, so we don't break the Brown Act, so we don't um, have things come up that the public was not aware of. That's why we have so much time between when we receive the agenda and when we have the meeting. So we have time to ask those questions of other board members. We can call up and say, did you have this question too? Or call up our superintendent who responds very promptly to any questions. So some of those questions can be resolved before coming to the meeting. And if there's an issue, for instance, the map test was brought up as, as one of the items. Certainly, if you want to have a discussion about the map testing, let's have it put forward as an agenda item, not just brought up off the agenda uh, when it's not appropriate and the public didn't know we were going to talk about map testing. So um, 
with a heavy heart, I am going to be upholding the censure just so that we can have some semblance of having a regular meeting that follows procedures and policies and laws. Not to quiet any questions. Uh, Trustee Tilly couldn't have said it better. She very clearly stated why we are bringing this censure, or why I am approving this censure. So that's it. Thank you. Board Member Smith. Thank you. Um, so a couple of things, just um, really quickly, I wanted to thank um, Board Member Tilly uh, for clarifying the difference between censure and censor. It is um, not the same thing, so that is an important distinction. Um, also, I want to thank Dr. Isom for highlighting the reason that this resolution came forward, which is protecting the district, something we are all committed to doing. Um, what I wanted to make public with my comments is um, clarifying attempts that have been made, uh, uh, at least upon my part and um, Board President Richardson as well. Um, you know, to mentor board member Patero, we have not left her flailing about with no guidance or assistance. Um, in addition to what is noted in the resolution, um, on March 31st, board president Richardson and myself, after consultation with an attorney, sat down with board member Patero to provide information and let her know about the risks of liability that certain behaviors might, um, you know, put the, put the district at risk of being liable. Uh, we also discussed, you know, the, the positive ways that she can engage in getting her, um, getting her opinions, her uh, positions through uh, in a positive and professional way um, where the governing board can consider it as a unit. Not that we are always going to agree, not that we're always going to disagree, but you know we can we can um, handle things in a particular way. Uh, in that meeting, we also provided several of the board policies and bylaws that are noted in the resolution. So this is not something that um, she would have been unfamiliar with. Um, you know, and and just to wrap up, you know, this isn't something I am proud to have my name associated to. There are several circumstances recently that I am in fact embarrassed to be a part of. Um, this though, it's something that has to be done and um, to be done to protect the district. And for that reason, I am in support of it. Thank you, board member Smith. We move to board member Wilson. Thank you. I perceive this action as a formal disavowal of reckless and irresponsible actions by Trustee Patero. The resolution is intended to shield the board and the district from legal and financial liability for those actions. The actions described in the document don't need elaboration, the document speaks for itself. I also reached out in support of board member Patero. I'd known her previously when in our, we worked together on the uh, advocate, music advocacy committee, music for our children, enjoyed that. I, when it looked like uh, I thought she was getting off on a wrong foot, I wrote her a personal letter um, offering my perspective, uh, she mentioned it last week, that it may not have been helpful. I got her permission to get a copy and make it public. I put it on my personal campaign website this morning. You can uh, look at it yourself and evaluate whether my intent was to be helpful or not. I also uh, invited her 
to a site, visit one of the schools that I am liaison with um, because she was interested. Um, I want her to succeed and I believe she can succeed. I hope she will succeed. Uh, it's not an automatic or easy thing for a board member to figure out what the job is. I had a hard time figuring out what my role is. Am I just a rubber stamp? Because from a certain angle, it looks like your job is just to approve things and not really ask questions or not really have an influence anywhere. It's hard. And so I hope she makes the transition from new trustee to establish trustee. And I commit to doing whatever I can to give assistance. I've lost some confidence, uh, but I can rebuild it. We had a clear warning for, from our state association consultant in our self-evaluation last week. Renegade actions by zealous board members can have serious financial consequences for districts. The example we heard about involved over $4 million in damages paid out, and it didn't sound like that was a rare thing. It's difficult to balance our obligations as elected officials with the need for oversight and accountability to, community, to the community, but it's a fine line that we must learn to walk to do it properly. Um, if we enter schools and speak with school employees as if we're the boss, we're doing it wrong. We've chosen the superintendent to be the boss, and we've agreed not to undermine that. Work environments become toxic when it's not clear who the real boss is. That's why we have placed limits on ourselves and empowered the superintendent to monitor us in keeping within those limits. Perhaps this censure, if it passes, will have no ultimate effect. If Trustee Patero from here forward abides by the proper limits of the office she has been elected to, then there will be no consequences aside from a bit of shame perhaps for having behaved enthusiastically but carelessly. But if the behaviors don't change and legal claims arise, then I would expect this resolution to matter greatly. It would constitute a defense against our responsibility if employees, for instance, are subjected to unlawful harassment or intimidation. This resolution would be a major part of our defense. My hope is that it will have no effect because the behaviors will change. In speaking for the motion, I would also like to respond to those in the community who have criticized the formal tone of our discussions, who say that our careful language looks artificial and that we're avoiding addressing this head on. Perhaps they are hoping for the drama of a personal battle. The reason we choose to address behaviors rather than personalities is to keep ourselves focused on our mission. Our mission is to shape an environment where students' needs come first and not to descend into personal conflicts we choose to focus on problem solving because our district is faced with many legitimate challenges and needs and should not be distracted by matters like this. That's why I support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Wilson. Board Member Honeychurch, I see your hand. I just wanna confirm that that's from your previous speaking opportunity. Okay, thank you. Chantel, did you have any comments or discussion as the student no. representative? No comment. Thank you. <clears throat> the 
chair of this governance team, um, our challenges have weighed heavy um, in, in more ways than one. Um, I, I personally um, have made um, efforts both in collaboration um, with the vice chair, board member Smith, um, um, to, to provide a framework, um, not of control, um, and not of one of suppression, but of one of dignity that allows for all matters to be handled decently and in order. And um, as board member Wilson has alluded, um, I too recall um, in my inaugural year, um, the challenge of believing that things functioned and flowed just like anything else that we see on a regular basis. Um, but after some time and commitment to um, seeking an understanding, which has maybe been the baseline that is that has allowed for me um, to remain um, stable in the the traumatic moments that we faced throughout the pandemic, throughout distance learning, and then now in the midst of a censure resolution, is to truly seek an understanding. Um, and that understanding has to come from both sides. It can't just be one-sided. Um, and it has to be poised in, in such a way that it allows for there to be um, an harmonious exchange um, and a willingness to really partner down the road together. We're a board of seven, but we're one. We're individualized in our personalities and our commitments, but we're still one. And we can only make that one decision when we're together. Um, and that's when we, we converge onto the district office into the room that has been designated for us um, as the boardroom to be able to have that dialogue. Um, and it's, it's, it's so important that we take heed to the Brown Act and why that's in place. Um, I received um, a few emails of concern um, relative to the resolution at hand, even this morning. Um, and just hearing that, receiving it, acknowledging it is one part of the battle, but also um, helping to assure the community that there's nothing for us to hide. Um, it's just there's not a typical understanding of how everything must work. Again, our agendas are posted at specific times. There's opportunities to ask questions. There's opportunity to get responses. And I would even push to even say there's an opportunity to still ask your question in the public meeting, um, even after you have received your answers so that your constituents um, are able to hear what your concerns were. And that still gives the opportunity for the superintendent and her team to provide that meaningful response. Those are opportunities that are available for all of us. And each of us handle our questions and our interactions with the superintendent who then reaches out to her staff appropriately to provide us with answers if she doesn't have those answers readily available. But nine times out of 10, she has the answer because she's working with that team. And we're not privileged to work with that team day in and day out. So that's why she's our conduit. That's why she's the secretary to the board. That's why she's our access to so much greater. Tonight, or this this afternoon, I just want to just 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 point out what I believe a lot of people have overlooked, and Board Member Isom spoke to this specifically, and it's to be further resolved. No one is being silenced. No one's being stripped of their role. No one's having anything taken away. This is a formal acknowledgement that we must must continue the course orderly and decently in order to be successful. There is nothing that prevents any of our colleagues from asking any of their questions, requesting for anything to be placed on an agenda, or even having just a discussion, which would have to be limited to three due to the, the Brown Act unless we have an actual agendized meeting. So with that, 
and what I understand and know to be confident about regarding this resolution is that this is our opportunity to form the team that we've needed from day one. And this allows for us to move forward knowing that we can be successful together. At this time, I just want to clarify, are there any other board members with any other discussion before we move forward with the roll call vote? Mr. Uh, Chair, I just want to make one. I just want to make one additional statement. That I want everyone to understand clearly. Um, not only did the community at large learn about this action at the time you did, so did four other board members because they couldn't know about it based on the law. So we did not even know if we would have a meeting because we didn't know if we would have a quorum because we could not talk about it outside of us three and our attorney. So I wanted to make sure that the community understands that. Call for the question. Thank you, Board Member Eisen. Roll call vote. Ms. Martino? Aye. Mrs. Honeychurch? Aye. Mr. Isom? Aye. Mr. Richardson? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Tilly? Aye. And Mr. Wilson? Aye. That resolution passes. We move to item three, which is adjournment. Um, there's no further discussion at this time. So our special board meeting um, that has been ha that was established today is now adjourned. Thank you for your participation, board colleagues.